Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I am very tired this morning, but that is not gonna stop me. It might stop me from pronouncing words properly, but I don't think I have to be tired for that. Today we're gonna be using the custom league feature yet again on NHL 23. This thing is getting used by this channel. And we will be utilizing some of the very first settings here in that I will have no divisions and no conferences. It will just be a 32 team NHL where the top 16 make it in. And for some reason it's set number of teams that qualify to eight no I want that to be 16 I'm kind of glad I looked at that because otherwise I would have had eight teams making the playoffs and I wouldn't have known that until the very end so yeah we're gonna rock 16 teams making the playoffs no conferences no divisions so I won't have to rename everything thankfully it absolutely does not matter what team I get because all I'm gonna do is best lines and simulate so it really does not affect me whatsoever and you know what I think I'm going to leave injuries on. It's going to be the authentic NHL here, you know? And I'll just have the assistant coach edit line so I don't even get notified when people get injured. So let's randomize a team and find out which squadron I will land on. And I will look at the camera and stop about right now. Golden Knights. All right, let's do it. Here in the division realignment, you can see that divisions do not exist. It is a 32-team league where they all sit in one group yeah auto staff management auto sign free agents this is what i do for the career sims and then i basically don't have to do anything i just sim to the end of the year look at all the stats record it look at the retirements record it i'm even gonna leave player morale on just to have that little extra touch of authenticity this is the one time i will allow jabroni to edit my lines so you know what you better make the most of it jabron so injuries will be on like i said and why does he keep resetting everything i'm just gonna go to full sim it doesn't matter again because i'm doing simulation but for some reason it just keeps defaulting these i definitely do not want morale meetings on because those are simply annoying waiver notifications stars only if a star is ever being sent down for waivers i want to know about it other than that don't really care trade offer notifications same thing send me a star or send me nothing and I will keep blockbuster trade alerts on just to see if any teams have a massive trade a trade worth reporting you know just gonna sim up to the regular season here and then we can go look at the standings just to see what it looks like with one big group again but it's just gonna look like the entire league you know it's not gonna be any different than going to that view I don't think yep it's our only option the entire league so there you go we are currently alphabetical but the season is going to begin and we will see if there will be multiple teams that normally wouldn't have made the playoffs from a division making it or not. Maybe we'll just have a top 16 anyway. Did I leave Fog of War on or something? Why is the binoculars there with Petrangelo? What's going on here? Okay, yeah, something is going on. Yeah, please edit my lines. I'm not going to do it. But what I will do is best lines for now head coach preferred lines boom we get a plus five not a big deal they want 85 overall chandler on the fourth line i almost want to move him but i'm not gonna do it i'm not gonna do it i did in fact have fog of war on apparently i don't know when i turned that on but at some point apparently i decided hey Let's do Fog of War. So naturally, I have turned that off. Does anybody use Fog of War? Is that a thing that people turn on? I don't know. I, like, if you're a hardcore GM mode person, maybe, but that ain't me. I mean, I love GM mode. Don't get me wrong, but... Alrighty, it is time to simulate the season. We are currently 30th, but that is because of the alphabet. I'll sim up to the trade deadline, see who is on the block. Maybe some players are being shipped out because of the fact that their team is not doing so well. Let's find out. Okay, what is going on with this game? I swear I didn't turn Fog of War on, and I swear I turned morale meetings off. I made an old NHL game heaters playlist on Spotify, and OLN just came on from 04. Great song. All right, let's run it back here. Morale meetings. No. Yo, not gonna lie, doesn't seem like a star to me. What is wrong with this game? Like, what is actually happening right now? I'm so confused. It's like every setting. It's like, oh, you meant this, right? No, I did not mean that. I meant exactly what I said, actually. I know that's shocking, but, you know, it is what it is. The Blue Jackets canned Emmanuel Desjardins. That's unfortunate. The Golden Knights started the season so good, and they are not finishing very good. This is 
a typical simulation for me where you start strong and then the team just falls off of a cliff and they fell hard. Maybe they got bit by the injury bug. Who knows? I haven't seen any pop-ups and I feel like I normally don't because I don't in the career sim. So I think it just doesn't even let me know. Let's keep our current trading block and enter the trade deadline. Find out who's available at this year's deadline. We got Pulock at 87 overall, Pavelski 87, Patches 87, Burt 86, Ryan Ellis. Okay, so yeah, this is a pretty good trade deadline. There's a lot of solid players here. No superstars, but definitely some quality pickups that will have an impact on your team. Ooh, the Rangers made a trade and it is going to be Robertson, a fourth and Skinner in exchange for Gavrikov and Nyquist. Hmm. Yo, that's crazy and all, but I'm out of here. Oh, Johnny Goudreau headed to the Flyers in exchange for Ellis and a second. Did not see that coming. Carl Hagelin placed on waivers. He is, what, a 70, 79. He's actually a fourth line forward. You know what? Let's claim him for fun. <laughs> Why not? I wonder if he'll even get thrown into the liney. Morale with the new team. Nope, that's not what it said at all. Lost morale for being with a new team. There you go. Was that so hard? The Golden Knights not making the playoffs. Not even close. We are currently 30th in the league. Rough go. Knowing my luck, it's going to be the top eight teams that made it again. It's not even going to be 16 because these settings are just ignoring me. I don't know why it's doing that. Eichel ended up playing 78 games. He had 61 points. Carlson had 60 and 82. He played the full season. Stone had 59 and 79. What is going on? Apparently plus five chemistry is just not good enough. Chandler, who was on the fourth line, had 39 points. Goalies didn't do so hot. 25, 29, and four from Leonard. Not a single shutout. At least Laurent got one. Laurent? I can't remember. I honestly forget how to pronounce his name. Leonard just barely getting that 900 save percentage he got a 303 GAA Samsonov led the league by quite a bit here with 42 W's he had a 916 save percentage and we see a 911 down here from Bennington who had 31 W's he and Samsonov also had seven shutouts Yossi led defenseman with 76 points Makar had 73 Tony D with 70 and Miro put up 65. Just out of curiosity, I wonder who has the highest shooting percentage for a defenseman. Oh my word, Rasmus. He played 28 games, 15 points, and a 14.6 shooting percentage. That's crazy. Nimala had a 14.3. And then we've got Joel Hanley with a 13.3. Same with Harley. Rasmus Anderson was a plus 49. That is quite the number. And then our boy Tori Krug had the most game-winning goals with a grand total of six. Huberdeau, the only man to break 100 this year, and he does it plus 7. He gets 107 in 82 games. McDusty had 97, so he put up his jersey number in 81 games. Nate Mack had 96, and Leo had 95. Sydney the Kidney had the best plus minus with a plus 36. Who had the most pims? Schmaltz with 77. I wouldn't really expect him to have a lot of penalties. That's weird. I forgot to check for defenseman and it was Pulock who had 65. Carlos there with 63 and then we had a bunch of 62. Mark Yankowski with a 33 and a third shooting percentage. That is pretty good, mate. Nate Thompson with a quarter. Same with Perot. Crosby and Mack both had 10 game winning goals and then we got a couple nines and a trio of eights. Martinuk, Pinto, and Kolasar leading for shorthanded goals. Honestly, I have no idea why I'm looking at all these stats. It just happened out of nowhere, and now I'm kind of interested. But let's get back on track here to the main purpose of this video <laughs> in the first place. I know that normally the Atlantic is pretty competitive. So we have Toronto and Boston. We also have Florida. So that is three Atlantic teams already. The Senators. So that's four Atlantic teams. Tampa Bay Lightning, five Atlantic teams. And that's it. Okay. I feel like I saw a few Metro teams as well. Philadelphia Flyers. Okay. And then we also have the Pittsburgh Penguins, so that's two. The Devils, three. The Islanders would be four, and the Washington Capitals would be five. So that is 10 total teams in the playoffs from the East, which means we only got six teams from the West. However, the Pacific Division did win the league. The Calgary Flames take home the President's Trophy, and they were nine points up on the Leafs, so they had a dominant season, to say the least. The only team to hit the 70-plus point percentage. So in summary, the Pacific won the league, but the East won the conference duel for sure, considering it's a 10 to six ratio. Let's find out who wins the playoffs though. I just realized that because there's no divisions or conferences, the Washington Capitals are playing 
playing the Calgary Flames in the first round. So yeah, that's also a possibility. Did not think of that at the start of this. It's only Eastern teams left. So the final four was all East by the looks of it. And the Philadelphia Flyers go on to win the Stanley Cup. Matthews had 30 points in 17 playoff games. Ovi had 23 in 16. And then Farabee and D'Angelo both had 23. Holy smokes. Oh, that's right. They picked up Johnny Goudreau in exchange for Ryan Ellis. I forgot about that. That definitely would not happen in real life as Goudreau just got to Columbus and apparently he plans to raise a family there. That's why he wanted to go there. So I don't think he's moving. Mackenzie Blackwood absolutely killed it. Knocked it out of the park with a 924 save percentage. He had a record of 15, 7, and 2. Only one shutout. That's unbelievable. What are you doing, Mackenzie? I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. When I want to cut something for the video because I stutter... I scream into the microphone basically or I get really close and just make a loud noise so that it peaks and that way I know that I'm supposed to cut that part out and don't leave it in. Had to do that a whole lot today. Honestly, my voice is starting to hurt from doing it and I'm getting angry. Samsonov had 17 games played and only an 896. So clearly the offense was carrying the Toronto Maple Leafs. Darcy Kemper, 923 though, not too shabby. Tony led defenseman with 23. Maury had 21. Dougie put up a flat 20 in 24 games though. Maury did... 21 and 17. Happy Gilmore accomplished that feat no more than an hour ago. John Carlson did pretty good. 12 points in 16 games. It's trophy time. We know that the Philadelphia Flyers won the Stanley Cup. So the Metro won the Cup and the Pacific won the Presidents. Hiberto gets the Art Ross and the Hart. Tony gets the Norris and Hiberto cleaning up. Holy crap. Three of the first four. He also gets the Lady Bang. Shane Wright takes home the Calder. Tony with the con Smythe, you see what I see, takes home the Vesna and the Jennings. I also, I feel like it's not very often that I see a defenseman win the con Smythe. White Cloud obtains himself the Bill Masterton, uh, Durapos? Yeah, that guy. He gets the Jack Adams. Ryan O'Reilly takes home the Selkie. Huberto gets the Lindsay, and then Hatrick Kane gets the Rocket Richard. Here's the playoff tree. So yeah, how many East-West matchups were in round one? So Calgary, Washington, St. Louis, Pittsburgh. That one's okay. Winnipeg, Tampa, Vancouver, Toronto. And then we have Edmonton, Boston, Colorado, New Jersey. Okay. And then it would be a New Jersey Philadelphia Flyers final. All right, no comment. You know what I mean? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. So there you have it. This is what would happen, apparently if divisions and conferences did not exist. If it was just one big league. Well, I mean, it is one big league, but you know what I'm trying to say. So anyways, on that note, hopefully you enjoyed the video, found it interesting. I had fun with that one. And you already know, but I will be seeing you soon.